Donald Trump's legal team is once again being shaken up, uh, this time uh, with the departure of Ty Cobb, who up until today had been heading up Donald Trump's uh, defense in relation to the special counsel's investigation. It's a tough job and it apparently broke him finally. <laughs> uh, now this seemed kind of abrupt to me, I guess to be fair, maybe they don't preview uh, the departure, the eventual departure of legal representation, but Sarah Huckabee Sanders had this to say today. For several weeks, Ty Cobb has been discussing his retirement, and last week he let Chief of Staff Kelly know he would retire at the end of this month, which I think is very plausible. I think that if you were defending the most powerful person in the world in one of the most consequential legal cases in the world, you just retire. That's what you do, <laughs> you just leave in the middle of it. But that's what they're saying. Um, but really, him leaving is not perhaps the most important part of this, it's who's going to be replacing him. Uh, Trump has hired Emmett T. Flood. That's a real name. The veteran Washington lawyer who represented Bill Clinton during his impeachment. Mr. Flood is expected to take a more adversarial approach to the investigation than Mr. Cobb, who had pushed Mr. Trump to strike a cooperative tone. So uh, two changes to the legal team in one day. You might be anxious for, for the exit to find you, were you part of this legal team with this client, mm -hmm. you know? So to be fair, as you say, uh, this is a cornerstone type case, a landmark type case, a high profile. There could be no higher profile case. But given the fact that you have a client who doesn't tell the truth, probably isn't telling you really what happened ever, uh, it might be a situation that you want to distance your, yourself from. The, the beauty of the Trump team having to embrace a Clinton lawyer, mm -hmm. I think, is uh, perhaps the the one twist in this story that is uh, delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, it's kind of understandable, I think, you know, at least it, it could be true that he was planning on leaving, but even if that wasn't true, certainly given some of the variables I mentioned, I think make it mm -hmm. understandable. Yeah. Well, I think the, the thing with Ty Cobb and, and the, the name itself is hilarious mm -hmm. that he has the same name as a racist baseball player, <laughs> who Donald Trump may have thought he was. <laughs> He that, might, it's he definitely might a possibility that Donald Trump was like, I got Ty Cobb. I never got a chance but, to play ball with him. But I think retiring is just a nice way of saying I quit because this is mm. a mess. And you know, hiring uh, Flood, first of all, how many lawyers have impeachment experience? That's true. Right? Not you a lot. Need someone who's been through it, you know, Nixon's lawyers probably aren't still around. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, honestly, at some point, they have to be running out of DC lawyers. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many lawyers has the Trump team been through? Like when you talk about them hiring a Clinton lawyer, it's like, well, yeah, because there's only so many. That's I mean, true. they they go through this. This is like it's it's comical, but but also sad and ridiculous that the president has this many lawyers. Yeah. You know, it, it just again it's unprecedented territory. I don't know any president that had to have. You, you got, I got my porn star lawyer, and then I got my impeachment lawyer, then I got my Russian investigation lawyer, then I got my uh, financial, um, you know, um, conflict of interest yeah. lawyer. Like the, there's teams for each one of these, and there's only so many lawyers to choose from. So you got to start going to the other side. And do you remember in the run up to the election how? All we heard about is, well, Hillary Clinton, look at all these investigations, look at these indictments that could be waiting for her. She'll be mired in legal problems the entire first year of her administration. Nothing will get done. I think that that irony probably hurts Trump, but he swore that he would create jobs and he's doing it in his own personal <laughs> legal. He'll do whatever's necessary, yeah. he'll break whatever laws. Yeah, necessary. jobs at $800 an hour. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm gonna do something that I almost never do though. Uh, I guess I'm gonna give Trump and his team credit. I, for two reasons, actually. So for one, we've we've heard for months now, if not longer, that he was having an incredible amount of difficulty getting anyone to sign on uh, to uh, to be his lawyer. Uh, and I think we know why he's impossible to manage. It's like the the guy who says every girl he dates is crazy. Maybe you're crazy, actually, <laughs> at the end of the day, if there's enough of them. So not only did he find someone at all, which is an accomplishment for Donald Trump, but from everything that I've read, he doesn't seem like a clown. He actually seems qualified to defend Donald Trump in this particular area. It might be a little bit too late. I'm not saying that this is a solution to all of his problems, but some of his representation in the past has been absolute goofballs. I mean, Michael Cohen is only sort of 
technically a lawyer. Ty Cobb, one of his greatest uh, achievements is that amazing mustache. Um, so he'd surround himself with people who weren't really up to the task of defending him considering how serious uh, the potential charges are. But in this case, I think that he actually has. And so I guess credit to Donald Trump, which I'll never give to him again. But how long will this guy last? Because when you, when, yeah. when you are a sane, competent person and you join the Trump administration, you tend to after like look at John Kelly. What's Kelly going through now? Mm -hmm. Where you're looking around like, this guy's an idiot. I can't be here anymore, you know. So, so yeah, this this is a good lawyer, a competent lawyer. But once he gets in the room, and like you said about the, you know, everyone's crazy, and I know you're crazy. When he's sitting in the room talking to Trump as his client, that might be the first time he finds out, like, whoa, yeah, you know. So, so yeah, he's a good lawyer. Obviously, he's been through this before, but he hasn't had a client like this before. That's true. We, I mean, we will certainly have to watch. Uh, two other things I wanna, I wanna touch on on this. Uh, one has to be, I understand that we've had it drilled into us since Donald Trump started running for the presidency that all media is fake, especially the least fake media. So if it's you know the New York Times and everything there, they're failing and they're fake. Those are the only two things you need to know about them. Those are the two Fs of media. And so uh, back in March of this year, Donald Trump tweeted this. The failing New York Times purposefully wrote a false story stating that I am unhappy with my legal team on the Russia case and I'm going to add another lawyer to help out. Wrong, I am very happy with my lawyers, John Dowd, Ty Cobb, and Jay Sekulow. They are doing a great job and and uh, we're not gonna go to his next and, but I can say what that and is. Uh, within like two weeks, John Dowd resigned. So he was gone within a couple of weeks. Now, <laughs> less than six weeks after that tweet, Ty Cobb is also gone. It's like final destination up in the White House <laughs> right now. But it was, but he felt like he had to say that the New York Times was purposefully lying to you. So if you are watching this and you still trust Donald Trump, which would be a little bit bizarre, but it's possible, understand that he will frequently lie to you purposefully about something as significant as the New York Times making up stories to temporarily defend himself, knowing that these people could be out the door the next day. Well, also, he's like the perfect reverse barometer. If he says one thing, it's generally the opposite. And he he's done it over and over and over again. But yeah, his I think Alonzo's onto something in that the the group of lawyers, regardless of their competence that surrounds Donald Trump, rapidly realizes, uh-oh, this guy's not being straight with us and we're and the waters are rising. There's almost, I wouldn't think, any inducement to remain part of the Trump legal team. Mm -hmm. And you really have to look at it when a lawyer says, I can't represent you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and these are lawyers who represent corrupt criminal, whatever. This is their job. Yeah. This is they and used to bad guys. A yeah. ton of money. To, to represent these people and they're like, I can't do this. And, and I wonder if they're getting paid. <laughs> That's a good point. You know, because Trump, I mean, historically, Trump does not pay anybody, right? Contractors have to sue him and work for pennies on a dollar. And there's all these people who never got paid. I wonder if these lawyers are getting paid and if so, who's paying them? I don't know, I don't know. And, and, and I think that that's a great question because certainly, if you're one of the most high profile lawyers in uh, DC, you might not need to work for Trump. You're probably doing doing okay, but you'd think there'd be lots of like middle tier lawyers who just to get the like the recognition and like your name being out there, like being affiliated with the president. But in this particular case, that's just not appealing to them, I suppose. By the way, the so, middle tier lawyers in Washington are working for the Justice Department. I'm not kidding. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not the they're not the high priced lawyers in Washington. The Justice mm -hmm. Department, the government uh, doesn't pay a ton of money. That's they oftentimes true. go into private practice after that. Trump's got the high-priced attorneys, but as Alonzo hints, what a great story that would be mm. if if the if the news broke that that Trump is stiffing his lawyers. In the other fake word, news broke. The, you know, the <laughs> fake, fake news, news from the failing, failing fake news. from the failing right from the yeah. failing yeah. whoever. You know what? I feel like it, it, it's starting to hurt. Donald Trump's never said the failing Young Turks. I want to fail. Yeah, you want to be included. You got to step up your game, John. I got to work on it. Maybe I, maybe someday <laughs> I can fail. Uh, one other thing, this is sort of your impending obstruction of justice watch. So they've got, um, they're bringing in Emmett Flood and he's gonna be more aggressive in relation to the investigation. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I think that we can sort of figure it out though. Uh, he also tweeted this today, uh, a rigged system. They don't wanna turn over documents to Congress. What are they afraid of? Why so much redacting? Why such unequal justice? At some point I will have no choice but to use the powers granted to the presidency and get involved. 
Bear in mind, one of the things he's being investigated for right now is the last time he got involved. Um, he said that obstruction of justice is a, uh, a trap and a scam. Um, so that is perhaps setting up for him to refuse to abide by any sort of charges related to that. He's also saying that he's going to continue it. So if you are the sort of person that's interested in the president being bound by US law, this should probably concern you because they are testing the bounds of that law every day. Two easy ways to follow Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.